Kako. On your airwaves with the show Game Plan Live on 99.7 Joy FM and 103.9 Hits FM. From wherever you're tuning in, welcome to the show. We are on from now till 3 p.m. talking the best from the world of sports, the best analysis, the best views on rival perspectives. All here, I proudly brought to you by Patriot Saw as well as DSTV. Uh, my name is Fentu Tahir Fentu. On the menu today, we've got quite a lot to uh, to to discuss today. The draw for the Wafu B and the 17 Championship uh, has concluded with Ghana in uh, Group A alongside Cote d'Ivoire and Benin. So just three teams in Ghana's group. And Group B will have Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Togo and Niger. That competition will start on May 15 to May 28. And that is the qualifiers for the African Under-17 Championships. Uh, which will then serve as the qualifier for the next FIFA Under-17 World Cup. There's huge development as far as uh, that Under-17 team is concerned, Black Starless. So Lai Kinsing, who had been assistant coach to Karim Zito, was only yesterday confirmed as the new head coach for Ghana's Under-17 team. It's an official role um, that he's now assumed, obviously because he's done some great work in the past, uh, to convince the people at the top that he can do the job all by himself. Um, and and so we'll be looking at what his emphasis should be. Ghana has not been to the Under-17 World Cup since the year 2017. So it's been seven years the last time we were at the Under-17 World Cup. The last time we were there, Kiddush Mohammed was a 17-year-old, a 16-year-old going on 17. Now he plays in European competitions, Champions League, Europa League, for fun. And we're not talking about him being one of the best players on the African continent. And in Europe, some might argue. So it's been a while uh, since we last participated in that competition. This is the start of that journey to the competition, the Under-17 World Cup. So there is that to come here uh, on the show. Now, the Ghana Football Association, uh, two weeks ago, also introduced as many as five new national teams for the women's uh, category and then four new national teams for the men. So, <laughs> that is amazing, okay? Now... Um, those new national teams, I'm just going to go through them. They still don't have names, obviously. Um, but I'll be very interested in what uh, what names you think we should give to them. Okay. Um, as far as uh, the new national teams are concerned, it's a lot of national teams. Okay. As far now for uh, the National teams for the boys, the four new national teams for the boys will be U16, U18, U19, and U21. Before, you know, we had uh, an under 15 team, we had an under 17 team, we had an under 20 team. And then the 23 team and the Black Stars. So we had five national teams as far as the men are concerned. Now we have four more new national teams as far as the men are concerned. So now in total, Ghana has as many as nine national teams as far as men's football is concerned. And it starts from under 50 national team, under 60 national team, under 17 national team, and the 18 national team, and the 19 national team, and the 20 national team, and the 21 national team, and the 23 national team, and the senior national team. That's nine national teams. For the women, in the past we only had four national teams. There was the 
U15, U17, U20, and the Black Queens. These were the national teams we had, four of them in the women's uh, football. Now they've added five more national teams to the women, which means that the women are also now up to nine national teams. They've added U16 women, U18 women, U19 women, U21 women, and U23 women. Or let me say girls, because these are teenagers, right? So now in total, we have an under-15 girls national team, under-16 girls national team, under-17 girls national team, under-18 girls national team, under-19 girls national team, under-17, under-20, under-21, under-23, and black queens. That's what we're dealing with. So the GFA says that the decision was done in consultation with the technical directorate and it is geared towards full implementation of the football strategy and philosophy. That is what it is. That's what the GFA says. Okay. And they said this strategy will not only ensure a smooth transition of players from one age group to the next age group, but also to ensure we do not lose out on talents on the national front. I'm not exactly sure how talent will be lost. I'm imagining how all these national teams will be maintained or whether all of them are even necessary in the first place. Um, because in the past, when you have U17 national team, it has 16-year-olds, it has 15-year-olds, it has 17-year-olds. So what is that going to be like? Is there going to be a strict implementation of an age so that if you are under 17 and you are 15 or 16, you go to the U16 or the U15? Like, I'm trying to figure out how that will work. It will be a very interesting conversation to be had. Okay. And they say the formation of the new national teams will also offer a lot more of our trained coaches who will be using the DNA. They will be offering them opportunities at elite level. So they said they are training too many coaches and they need to give them a lot of national teams. Okay. And it, the, the statement goes on to say players from each of the age groups will progress to the next level year after year as they will come train and play games locally and internationally for the development. Are the GFA going to keep all of these players in camp the whole time? Or well, what is this strategy? <laughs> all right, we also have UEFA Champions League, of course. Real Madrid showing yet again why they're named Kings of Europe or why they've been nicknamed the owners of the UEFA Champions League. But there's a lot of people crying out in Barcelona over the officiating. We'll talk about that as well here on the show. It's live and interactive. Your messages are welcome, 55 on WhatsApp, and also on Twitter. Use the hashtag GamePlan. We'll read those messages for you right here on the show. All right, uh, show proudly brought to you by uh, PetroSol as well as DSTV. The guys are all in studio getting a little bit impatient with me because they said that I was taking too much time with my introduction. But I had to establish the premise, okay? Very important premise. Sucho Fair Philip Atrim is here. Sue. Daniel Kranzing is here. <laughs> Jowlishing is here. Uh -huh, yeah, well, <laughs> 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 guys, welcome to the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. How oh, are geez. you guys? Have We're you great. Had, uh, We're good. Have what a, a week. good week. What a yeah. week. What a week. Wow. By Utoku. Ah. Yeah, I really talk. But now let's not waste time well, you know, talking he about he 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 chats, he chats, <laughs> He's talking about my talking. The same way I too like to uh, and uh, Muftao likes to interrupt the interruption. <laughs> <laughs> You are talking about my talking. <laughs> All right. Listen. Um, 
we've got a lot to cover today and um there's only one place to start and let's get that out of the way the uefa champions league is now done and dusted in terms of the final four Bayern Munich against real madrid buying they beat arsenal one nil to to complete a 3-2 aggregate victory to book a place in the semi-finals. Joshua Kimmich with the only goal. They will face Real Madrid, who held uh, Man City uh, to a four-all draw, if you like, in uh, over 210 minutes of football, and then won on penalties, obviously, to progress. So the defending champion has dumped out of the competition. So it's going to be Real Madrid against Bayern Munich. And then on the other side of the draw, Borussia Dortmund stunned Atletico Madrid at home. And they are also true to the semi-finals. And there, they will, obviously, uh, is it the first final since 2013, is that correct? Yeah, first semis. First semis, thank you. Since they made the final back in 2013. Yeah. That was a mighty, mighty long time ago. Mm-hmm. Since club, eleven years. Since club, that's a long time, and they've had it. They've had a team that's very unfancied. I didn't even think that they had it in them to do what they did to Atletico Madrid, but they did. And Borussia Dortmund are in the final as well. So it's what it is. What's the fourth team in the final? PSG. Paris Saint Germain shocked Barcelona. Okay, Luis Enrique doing the remontada that he did. With Barcelona against PSG. This time around, with PSG against Barcelona. Despite losing the first leg 3 2, they won the second leg convincingly to complete a 6 4 aggregate victory. But there are lots of issues emanating from that Champions League. Issue number one, and that is slightly related to what happened yesterday in the Europa League as well, where Borussia. Well, by Leverkusen's unbeating start to the season continued. 44 matches now in all competitions unbeaten. Yesterday, they showed exactly why. Coming from behind to draw one all with uh, West Ham, knocking them out 3-2 on aggregate. Uh, in the 3-1 uh, uh, on aggregate, I beg your pardon, in the Europa League. Liverpool also won 1-0 against Atalanta. But the first leg 3-0 deficit means they exit the competition 3-1 on aggregate. Those defeats for the English teams, not a single one in any European competition. Well, the Europa League, two of them knocked out. The Champions League, two of them knocked out. Only Aston Villa in the UEFA Conference League semi-finals. But the exit of the four English teams means that next season, that fifth UEFA Champions League slot will not go to them. Most likely, it will go to Germany. No, we are going to Italy. No, Italy have a guaranteed one already. Yeah. Okay, so the other one. The two, yes. The Italy other could one. actually have six, depending yes. upon if. There you go. Exactly. Uh, AS Roma or But Italy, they've guaranteed them. their fifth one already. So don't yeah. worry. But we are looking for the sixth. <laughs> yeah, because if if AS Roma or uh, uh, Fiorentina go on and win their respective yes, competitions. True story. Yeah, we could be in Atalanta. Um, Atalanta as but well. The, the, Roma, but, yeah, but, so. the, but the point I'm making is. That fifth one that was a straight fight between Germany and England yeah. is now well and truly over for the English. Yeah, it's done. So the true Farmers League knocked out of Europe. And uh, because surely the Farmers League can't be the ones doing so well that they're getting possible. extra sports. Yeah, exactly, possible, right? Yeah. yeah, so the Farmers League are the ones that are not doing well in Europe and, we'll and are not sports. getting the extra sport. Yes. Okay, so big problem for English football. Ah. But guys... <laughs> but if uh, if it's not a family, no, how is the one manager is ah. perhaps on his way to win it four no. times in the last six, Calm, five, five years? Shocked. Calm down. I'm it's won it six times in the last the, seven. Five the five. rankings are based on this season. Uh, your point is, if you go back previous seasons, the English Premier League has co- dominated European football. Yeah, but it's cool. Uh, this, is just a, this is just a no, bad when year. It yeah, when it matters, it's just a bad year. We'll see who wins next. When it's when it matters, they don't have the soon soon too. Sicho, let's go through them one by one. Let's begin with that game. Between Barcelona and Paris Saint Germain. Right. The issues coming out of it are very clear. And it is that Barcelona fans, their manager included, feel that the officiating undid all of their hard work. I, no, I don't think the officiating did anything. I think the, the decisions made on the pitch did everything. And I think, first off, the way Barcelona started the game, Credit to them though, they, 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 they took the lead. By the way, they started the game, they started the game on the back foot. So at home, you're expecting them to keep a lot of the ball, get PSG to run around a bit more. 
but it's almost as if right at kickoff, Barcelona conceded possession to PSG and they were sat in their own half. Then on the counter, they got that 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 goal coming through. Great job by Lamin Yamal and Rafinha, who didn't know too much about the finish, but in the end, got in the right place at the right time to find a flourish. But you've got to look at the decision the referee had to make and why he had to make them and see if you're going to blame the referee or you're going to blame the players who got the referee to make the decision. In the first instance, it's Barca who's made a mistake in their own half, in their in their own third. And PSG have capitalized. Bakula gets the ball and takes a very good touch across Araujo. But I wonder if Bakula might have just overrun that ball, you know, in facing Testegan. But what Araujo doesn't realize is that the path of run that Araujo chose, there was no way in a million years he was going to get to the ball before the player. And he also didn't check his shoulder to look if he was the the last man or not and he was the last man it's funny because the incident also happened outside the box mm-hmm. so it was a straight red card the reason why i say it's funny is because if it was a step further and it went into the box the new rule of the no double punishment would have meant that it's a pen which is the one punishment and it's a yellow card not a red card mm-hmm. so the context is where did the foul happen and was the ball towards go and was he the last man the ball the foul happened outside the box he was the last man and Bakula's touch was taking the ball right towards go not away from go so the referee had to look at all these situations and analyze it and in analyzing it last man outside the box with the ball bearing down on go that is a red card a more experienced defender allows him to go on because you are still leading the game or, i mean you're still giving your goalkeeper a chance to make a save you're going to see if Bakula has go what it takes to score one on one because he's not Mbappe. He's not. He's not. A, he's not a, a player that you certainly sure is gonna finish. Like I said, the way he tagged the ball was a great touch across the defender, but he probably took the ball too close to the goalkeeper that he would have wanted. And Araujo miscalculated. He misjudged outside the box. That was fun. That was a record. Then Xavi also got furious, and it wasn't for Xavi's verbal outburst. It was a verbal outburst. I guarantee you, the referee is gonna warn him. But when you've gone to kick UFS branding for for the for the for the camera set yeah for the equipment that they've got there right in front right in front of the fourth official that is anywhere else in the world anywhere in the world it is a red card it the, you, the, i don't see how anybody sees what Javi did violent conduct. it's violent conduct and the thing about kicking things there is that you don't know where these things are kicking are going to end up Javi didn't injure anybody, but if you encourage that, another manager is going to kick a bottle and it's going to go right into the stands or injure somebody in the dugout. So coaches and people on the bench have always been educated not to throw or kick things about in those areas. And so the referee was spot on to be firm. If it's in La Liga, maybe he gets away with it. But in the Champions League, at this level, you don't get away with these things because that is the benchmark. It is, that is what everybody's going to use to judge. The, 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 the officiating in Europe. So Barcelona lacked their discipline. Araujo should have allowed the player to go through or maybe chose, chosen a better angle to his run. Xavi, as a coach, should have known that he couldn't have gone that far to kick it. And from that point, Xavi then had to make a decision after the red card. Was it the right choice to bring off Yami, Lamin Yamal? Maybe he's thinking he's young. 10 against 11, he might not have the experience to cope with the demands of the game. But up until that point, he was their brightest spot in attack. So you're going to stick him on for his quality or you're going to bring him off for his, for his inexperience. I thought you chose the latter. Brought him off for his inexperience and I thought maybe then that helped us a little bit. Because for, for it doesn't matter how good Robert Lewandowski has been in, in the past. He's not been great this season. And whenever the ball went long to him, he couldn't make a stick. So what was his value in the game? Anyway, but I can understand it's not easy to pull off Robert Lewandowski when they got Lamin Yaman Rafinha in Obviously. the game. So there was that. They're gonna but, kill you for that. Yeah, but credit to PSG because once that happened, they, they didn't rush it. I've seen teams who 10 against 11 are gonna rush it. They're gonna straight up be looking for the answers. But they were patient. And that's one thing we've seen about Louis Enrique's team. Sometimes boring, but what they have is patience. And they look for those moments, and when those moments arrive, they punish Bassa. Uh Daniel, the second penalty incident. Um I find that very difficult to understand. I mean, I can understand maybe a rush of adrenaline. Sometimes it can happen. But he's going away from goal. And the tackle that comes in, it's just... I've heard Thierry Henry say that he, he struggled to understand exactly what happened. It's what she, she, she was saying. That, yes, 
too many individual misjudgment from the Barca players really cost them this match. And their manager too. Yeah. Um, the manager's red card for me, I don't really see it as a big deal. Those things happen and teams still go on to win the game. And even the, the scenarios that panned out even after Xavi left, I think Barca could easily have got two two goals even after Xavi left. But that's aside. You're talking about the Cancelo penalty. First yes. of all, that is typical Cancelo. That <laughs> is on-brand Cancelo. Um, he's a very bad defender. We all know that. His defensive instincts can be uh, quite problematic at times. And as I said, that was that was typical of him. And it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate that sometimes um, players' instincts kick in at the wrong time. They are, uh, should I say, negative instincts. Um, he really didn't have to make the tackle. Um, I think it was, it, it was Dembele. He yeah. was going away from Actually goal. Yeah. The ball. yeah, he miscontrolled the ball. The ball had now landed on his right foot. He was being forced onto his wrong side. Mm-hmm. Dembele is stronger with his left foot. Yeah, you might say he's ambidextrous, but he's much better with his left foot. So he was going away from goal on his wrong side. On his wrong side. And a smart defender would just shield him away from goal. Guide him. Guide him away. Obviously, he'll try and turn. Then you have that one-on-one you facing him. That's a much better thing than throwing yourself into the tackle. Because another thing that... And in as much as it's, it's, it's Cancelo's instinct, for me, when you are a player like Cancelo and you are that smart going forward, he should understand that attacking players also, they'll play for these things. Yeah. Even though Dembele has miscontrolled the ball, he can sense a tackle coming. Mm. And he will... He will play it. He will play you. So you don't have to make that tackle. So it was quite disappointing that Cancelo threw himself into that tackle. But for me, I will, I will, and, I, and I'll say this thing. You see, it's 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 three things when I'm when you're analyzing games. Three things that you need to look at from the coaching point of view, then the application, yeah. and then there might be some element of luck. Some of these things happen. In terms of coaching, I think Xavi didn't outcoach uh, 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 Luis Enrique. He outclassed him over two legs. Barcelona were they were very comfortable. It didn't look like a, a, a Champions League semi-final team. You see, when you look at all the small stories, um, Enrique coming back to face Barcelona. There was the Xavi's Barcelona team. They really did a number on PSG. They were comfortable, very comfortable. First leg went away from home. Second leg at home, Barcelona looked comfortable at 1-0. You could tell that this was a game that was going to go according to script. Barca were going to see it off. Then the red card happened. Now, even after the red card, I think Barcelona were smart. You see, and I say they were smart because Xavi found a way of maintaining their identity while still being a threat. So they didn't retreat into sitting back and low block, no defending. Barca were still trying to play their game. And they still fashioned out some decent opportunities. Was, especially that, was that the smartest thing to do in your opinion? Smart. Because they had a 2-0 lead down to 10 men. Yes. Then they conceded a, 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 a red card. Then they conceded a goal just before halftime. So coming into the second half, that is when you have, when you have had enough time to regroup and reset the, the strategy. For me, in that second half, look, I think Barcelona were... It's, look, it's a, it's a, this is an elite game, and it comes down to fine margins. For me, from the coaching aspect, they did enough to be able to, to, to win the game. I'm looking at that Gundogan chance. I'm looking at that Rafinha opportunity. And you see, the Rafinha opportunity, for me, showed why Lewandowski has sort of lost it. Because, I, I don't know if you guys remember... Rafinha drives into the box. Yeah. He sort of shimmies like he's going out. Then he yeah. comes in again yeah. and plays a ball across the face of goal. Look, all the top strikers in this world will be on the end of that yeah. those chances. Yeah, Lewandowski yeah. stopped running. Yeah, stopped running. And that was that was wrong. You you can't like a striker of Lewandowski's caliber cannot stop running in that in that instance. You follow your wingers run because you are not offside. You let can't me, be offside me, if you're aligned. Let me copy a G um three V two. Exactly. Ferran Torres, uh, Ferran Torres runs off him. Rafinha on the other side. Instead of slipping Torres through, and there was even uh, I think it was this, uh, Joao Felix also. Ja- Joao Felix, I he think. And then he opted to go for the shot. Sure, so yeah. those were scenarios where Barcelona could have killed the game, but it was quite dif- disappointing from a Barca point of view. Now the reason why I'm even extra disappointed in PSG. Look, I th- look, Luis Enrique and PSG are lucky. 
How were they lucky? They are, look, they are they were really, really lucky even that Araujo that, made such a silly mistake. But even it. in the first leg, despite mm-hmm. losing 3-2, I thought that PSG actually had enough chance. They should not have lost that match. They should not have lost. Fine. So that's You exactly. can argue so, they shouldn't have lost. Yes. But in terms of so coaching and home lucky. advantage, yeah. Barcelona, what Barcelona did in Paris was superior. Barcelona were brilliant. And Barca up until the red card. And I know it might sound like an excuse, but I'm looking at the purely coaching point and of view. At, at 2-1 in Paris, mm. at 2-1, after the uh, Vitinha's brilliant goal, yeah. at 2-1, I yeah. thought PSG could have straight up gone like 4-1. Yes. No, they, 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 really, they, they, had they had a 10 minutes spell that, yeah. especially they after the last second half, that Barca were completely like struck by the the movements and some of the changes you recovered. Yeah. It's true they recovered yeah. well. They the recovered they well. Did, it, it, PSG it was, couldn't find it. It was more of a moment. That's yeah. how I'm seeing it. It was more of PSG. And that's football. That's, that's football. Yeah. But, but when you let it, that so. pass and you look at it holistically, yeah. and, and that's what I'm looking at, over the two legs, holistically in terms of strictly coaching, I think Xavi did a much better job, much, much better lo- the job than Luis Enrique. And again, I will criticize Luis Enrique for his, his use of Mbappe over the two legs. We all know that, look, the best player in PSG, probably the best player in the world at the moment is Kylian Mbappe. Mm-hmm. He, how he used him in the first leg, and even especially the second leg after the red card, it was almost like he didn't know who he had in his team. Yes, you might look at the goals and see Mbappe scored two goals. Yeah, but he didn't play well. But he didn't, he didn't, he was, he was virtually quiet. He basically ghosted over the Ghosted. He, he struggled. between him and the team. And yeah. for me, look, it's <laughs> where he played Bakula. That is that is basically where Mbappe should be playing. Mm-hmm. And even if you see, this is my point. Even if you want to accommodate all three players, there should be some fluidity in it. Allow Mbappe the the freedom to be able to drift wide. It was almost a very strict instruction for Mbappe to stay in, uh, uh, central. narrow, central, and he doesn't thrive in in. I don't know, but is like it also because like maybe against Barca he. He's looking at the threats Lamy Yamal could post and Mbappe necessarily won't track back. Bakula will do a better job at tracking back. So maybe he doesn't no, trust that, Mbappe in that, in, that, that in, I get. Would it, would it, that I get. But when, when you are in possession, yeah. there are certain positions that players pick up in possession and then out of possession you can retreat. What I'm saying is that when you looked at Mbappe, it was very clear that he was instructed to number stay now. Yes, yeah, stay yeah. in the number nine position. And for me, he didn't thrive. It, in that he position. didn't thrive. And I'm afraid he could repeat the same thing against Dortmund and maybe if you don't take care it could be a yeah. different it, 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 you know and it's very ironic that um, you know we're being more critical of, of the winning team of the winning team Luis Enrique <laughs> it does tell you the kind of maybe expectation that we've come to have on PSG right, which finds- again it's very ironic because I don't think a lot of people expected PSG to actually get this far mm. especially at the start of this season when you look at the way Luis Enrique and his PSG team have played I think even in the group stages they struggled oh, but they were in the group of death they were. That was but a I'm very tough group. It was a tough group. Yeah. But I'm saying that from the evidence of the matches they played in the group stages, we didn't think that PSG had a really good team. You know, so mm. I, I, I I have been really impressed with PSG. I'm not going to They're also in the treble, yeah? Yeah. They're in the cup final. They are. They are. They are. They are. And, 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 and that but is it's gone quiet yes. a little. And that is to say that PSG, this season in particular, and even if you look at the kind of players that they've invested in this season, it's not being the typical the PSG. PSG. And yet, yeah. Luis Enrique is getting the results. No. And you mentioned the thing even about the red card. Yeah. We've seen teams go down one man and still go on to win the games or hold on to advantages. Mm-hmm. It's left to the opposition team to find a way to still get the win. Because at the time they got the red card, Barcelona had a two-goal advantage. Yeah. And they needed to overturn that. So, you couldn't just sit down and do it. You had to play and play your best football because, like I said, we've seen that happen many times where teams go down a man and still be able to hold on to an advantage for as long no, as I'm, they could. I'm just saying that PSG can be much better. They, th- they, they can th- be. Th- and for me, yes. look, but let's not let's not let's not dance around the issue. That path, that path has <laughs> helped them. No, trust me. You've had you've had Real Madrid, Man City, Bayern, Arsenal all on one side of the draw. It's not their fault, though. No, it's not their fault. I'm not saying it's their fault. So I'm saying, I don't of course, know why you, you're you bringing beat, it up. No, you beat who's in front of you. That's yes. fine. Good. But let's not act like the, the semi final PSG has reached the same as the semi final that Real Madrid has reached. Oh, wait, which semi final is Real? Which one? I is you PSG had the <laughs> other side. If PSG had the other side, you are a madman. No, 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 let's Who not do that. No, 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 no. Ah, we will not do that. that. The, uh, the PSG people did they ask that they be? Do- but no, they I'm were, not saying they asked that. They were drawn. 
you see, people are not, they were drawn against the Spanish champions. That's not easy. Who? PSG. Oh, today, Barca. against Barca. For a, a Barca not Spanish the, champions. Coming into the. No, no, listen, and even in, listen, Barca yeah, have yeah, had, yeah, no, had, had a great season. <laughs> yeah, Barca, Barca, Barca came into that game as good as Barca came into that game. Not meant to and PSG sure. have had a great season. Yes, they are yeah, top, they of, are their top of their league. Yeah, they, they are in the cup. Have you even given them credit for having a great season? Ah, but PSG are always top PSG of their league. Top of their league. You see, this is unbranded. No, but listen, PSG. listen. I get what you are saying because what Enrique has had to do is to strip the club of everything they call their culture. The blink blink, and I remember. No, uh, and it's a good thing. Uh, uh, you see, I don't, want, I don't want to enter that conversation. Yeah. I don't want us to enter that because since they allowed people, some people to go. No, we all knew that's what they had to do. We all knew that's what they had to do. But people are looking at that it like uh, 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 Enrique has done something that <laughs> was unpopular and wrong, and now he's no, getting. No, 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 he's done the right thing. I don't think that's the conversation. He's done the right thing. But the truth is, even we all knew his results when he did this thing. It wasn't. For Enrique to decide who was going to leave or was going to stay, they were leaving already before. They yeah, didn't they make were, these they they you know, He didn't say, I don't want Neymar, I don't want this. No, the no, fans no, 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 no. said they didn't yeah. want them. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Tamako, yeah. let's sing. See it, see it. The fans <laughs> said they don't want <laughs> If you would uh, indulge me, I really would want us to move on from that Barca conversation, PSG okay. conversation, and, and go into another one, yeah. a really big one. Um, and we'll talk about Arsenal briefly. But first, Man City against Real Madrid. I've seen this narrative uh, on Twitter. With I think it, it was, or it's probably being propagated by English pundits who say that Real Madrid did not come to Man City to play football. And Man City had 30 shorts and Real Madrid only had, what, 10? And, and look, I, and that Real Madrid did not deserve to win. And quite frankly... If you look at the first, like the way it went, quite a number of people ruled out Real Madrid. Myself included. Daniel included. Daniel said the first, like, the second leg would be over by the 30th minute. 68. 68. 68 hey, you are half in the team. <laughs> Check <laughs> this guy. He said it would be over by the 60th minute. Look, a lot of people. But you didn't you did mention that I was the only one person who you, said that you, it's not yeah, as straightforward yeah, as you yeah, No, you said it wasn't straightforward. Yeah. But you did say Man City were favorites to go to, which is fine. You know. But For the bottom first line, time. yeah, no. <laughs> bottom line is, bottom line is, and that's what I jokingly tweeted that when it comes to the Champions League, there is something about Real Madrid and the way they get the result. And we've had this conversation before, where I've asked the question whether or not you think Carlo Ancelotti doesn't get enough credit for his own tactical news, and even after the game. Jude Bellingham was asked about it. He said the reason they play so well is because he gives them the freedom. And I'm thinking, he doesn't give you tactical instructions. He gives you the freedom to play what you like. Freedom and that's why tactical so That's in itself is tactics. So that's, that's what I'm saying. But, and he, and he did mention that other teams play in this well intricate manner. Passing, well, and he said it's nice, nice but see. that's not what they teach us. And that's not what he tells us to do. He just tells us to go and enjoy our football. And we have a lot of freedom to do whatever we want to take decisions on the page what is it about Carlo Ancelotti's Real Madrid that has made them look so successful and yet when you look at the evidence of the football that is played you sometimes tend to think they don't deserve to go through and we've had this conversation about Real Madrid so many times where they've won matches and you look by it's like how the hell did that happen okay um, I'll try to answer all of those, which is quite a bit. But the first point about people's appreciation of Real Madrid team and that performance and Carlo Ancelotti and all of that, the, the simplest explanation, and this is not up for debate. I don't care if you disagree out there, but you're wrong. A lot of people do not appreciate it enough. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not sufficiently educated on the subject matter of Ancelotti's body of work. There you go. To right. then be in the position to say that this is not good enough or this is good enough. Mm -hmm. And so often, we, from very uninformed positions, make conclusions that, oh, Ancelotti is not a tactical coach or he's not technically sophisticated. That's what it is. And, and I don't care. It's not for, the, it's not for debate. Because I, I saw a very interesting question. How many people can make sense that. of 
from his point of view, he wants to know. Like he genuinely wants to know from yeah. the public what is Angelotti's style of football. What He's asking Real the wrong people. people. At, I know at Real Madrid. Yeah. Yes. Look, and and the question that he asked, a lot of people did not even understand the it. question. And then, yeah. No, the the tweet itself, and then they jumped to go and say, look, people don't understand the body of work itself. Help us to break it down. Help us then to tell people that no, it's not just about. This Real Madrid team, because it's been the one thing, especially English football fans have been saying about Ancelotti's team okay. from time immemorial. It is wrong. Mm-hmm. You don't understand it. The fact that you are not sufficiently educated on the subject matter does not mean that there is no rich content there, or does not mean that there is no technical value there. Let's go through Ancelotti's style and how it fed into uh, yesterday Wednesday, Wednesday night. Game. So I'll try to explain some of the simplest things that I picked up. Okay, you realize that at any point in time. When and we're discussing this off air, whenever a Real Madrid t- player ran into traffic, there was one player always in proximity in the first phase of their build up for them to pass the ball to, and that Cruz was Tony Cruz. And that was Tony Cruz. Yes, yeah, it was not by accident. The guy they play Bob with that. Sabo no mami. Hey, it was not by accident. I know someone who disagrees. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't mind him. And also, that guy says <laughs> that guy says Isaac is better than Haaland. <laughs> if I catch him, man. if I catch him, man. <laughs> my brother, president, <laughs> the <laughs> fundamental. Shout out to Kojo Gentiani. Yeah, yeah, man. He does not like Tony Cruz. <laughs> what? <laughs> Every day, he has Tony Cruz on his neck. So, but he likes to boost like no, yeah. Those things, <laughs> <laughs> those things were not by accident. Look, there is a way coaches arrange their teams. The structure and everything and who plays where. So when you look at the heat maps, you'll find that players often operate in a particular zone and they don't go beyond that. Mm-hmm. That is a clear instruction from the coach. Mm-hmm. Right? A few times they may stray further away from that and all of that. That is why whenever there is the analysis of the Chelsea Barcelona game at the Stamford Bridge in 2009, mm-hmm. and I think David Duncan famously explained this on Twitter, that while people praise Michael Asian for what he was doing, he was worried that at some point he was going to be punished because he got too excited and was always vacating his position. And mm-hmm. Ultimately, the goal that decided the tie came because Asian vacated his position and Yester fired that ball into the net. So there are clear tactical instructions to these players. And yesterday, Tony Cruz, or on Wednesday, Tony Cruz was that outlet for the players whenever they were in trouble. And mm-hmm. he made things a bit simpler and allowed... Real Madrid to play against possibly the best pressing team in the world at the moment, if not the best pressing team, okay. right? So, or if not one of the best pressing teams, there was that. And then if you look at the way the team has played generally over the season, and again, a lot of the people who are saying Real Madrid are defensive, it is not factual. It is coming from people who have not watched Real Madrid enough this season. I would perhaps Is it just this season or... The game against the second leg against Man City, they were no, defensive. But the, what we are responding to are the sweeping statements people have made that yeah. they are defensive. Yeah, generalized and, and that they don't deserve that one to game. be here. Okay, the, those are people who don't watch Real Madrid enough and do not have enough information on the current iteration of the Real Madrid team and how far Ancelotti has taken them. Okay, how many injuries has this team not had? Quite a lot. How many? Players did not leave Real Madrid, especially the key players who we thought, or the key positions no, we thought put it that they way. needed to put have put signed. It that way. People will appreciate it because for the injuries, they are huge. His first two centre back players are out. Alaba, Militao, and, and Alaba. Militao. His go- first number one and the best goalkeeper in the world coming into the season, Courtois, Courtois. is out the whole season. ACL. And then the left back, in the left back, Felamendi. Felamendi only got back. Thirds of the season. Now he he's, he doesn't have an elite striker, so he's had to find a way of finding goals in this team. He came into the game without his best cent- uh, defensive midfielder in Chouameni. So the problems coming into the game against City at Etihad that almost every European team will not survive were huge. He managed that. And then Chouameni gets suspended in that first league. So he doesn't get to play. He's worked out around all of this in a season where he has to manage the transition of the biggest signing from the summer in Jude Bellingham yeah, yeah, and yeah. ensure that the player fits in. And Ancelotti scores four marks in that sense because he doesn't only get the player to settle. His settlement is so good that the player acclimatizes and then he becomes the guy who answers the goal-scoring problem that Real Madrid had. So, up until now, there are 
many people who don't even remember that Madrid did not make a significant outlay for a centre forward to replace Karim Benzema. Yeah. Because yeah. in the beginning of the season, he was rationing the goal scoring responsibility, essentially rotating it between Vinicius Jr. and then, of course, it was Bellingham who was scoring the chunk of the goals. Vinny got injured at a point. He, so that center for the experiment he was all with Bellingham. Bellingham and all even Rodrigo had a dry spot yeah, for like dry spot. Yeah. Look, yeah. Yeah. Even, even in the first leg that some Real Madrid fans compl- you know how often we say that a team should not be imbalanced or lopsided they need to have sufficient balance and be effective in every phase of the attack I don't know how, how many of you noticed the entire right side of Real Madrid's attack was redundant nothing happened there mm. it, it, the Pl- the entire plan was that in order to be able to deal with Real Madrid, to Man City's midfield problems, they needed to vac- vacate that space and allow one of their three players further up the pitch to join in the middle of the pack in Jude Bellingham and then support them to be able to at least deal with that midfield problem they had. And so they were able to retain that sharpness in front of goal. So if you look at how they've stayed competitive from the beginning of the season up until now, you cannot look at that team and say that Ancelotti is defensive. They have not played defensive football. I would agree if you say the way they attack is perhaps not on the level as the level of Man City. I would agree. Perhaps football not is not only about attack. No. It's about and, winning games. And you see, here's, here's the thing. A lot of people, there are very hypocritical takes on this particular matter, even for the English fans. Think of the greatest English teams in the modern era. How many of them were dominant in the true sense of the word they were not even when 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 man united won the treble in 1999 they didn't play domination football yeah like they were probably one of the best teams in europe played football that just play efficient of, football yes. that's it you don't Look, need to dominate if there is if there is any team who you can say in the last 20 or in in the last 30 that's years massa. from that's england massa. that Ooh. you can use the word dominant to Man describe City. it will be Pep's Barca yes. in the Pep's context Man of City. European football. But even that is not sufficient basis. It's not happened enough times for you t- for that to then be the measuring rod for what everyone else does or how everyone else wins, right? If you say that this is how it is done, it means that over time, repeatedly, this is what you are used to. And so there is a brand of football. There is a profile of players that are unique. And that style wins. That style dominates repeatedly. But since 1992, 394 season till now. The, in the 90s, the best English team in the Champions League, Leeds United, I think, made the semis a few years before United won it in 99. United were not the most dominant team in Europe. United made the quarters in 2001. United were not the most dominant team in Europe. Come back to the Chelsea period before um, Abramovich came. When they, I think they made the semis or so. Yes, they, were not the the dominant team. they were not the most dem- dominant team. The Chelsea team under... Jose Mourinho was not the most dominant team. Man United period again, 2007, 08, 09, when they made the finals. 2011, when they made the finals, they were not. Chelsea, went, as for Chelsea, people even say they got lucky in the in their first Champions League run. Anybody who says that, you go chop slap. <laughs> against <laughs> Bayern Munich. So, I don't Real know... Madrid are not lucky. Chelsea are not lucky. So, <laughs> it is efficient so, football. So, I don't know where the so idea that... you can't say Real Madrid are not lucky on one front and come and see Chelsea were lucky. Papa. So, look... When Caraga and people say the sort of things they say, I don't know where they get that idea from. And in terms of Ancelotti's body of work, look, Basigi always tells me this, and it's something I will never forget. He says, coaching in the simplest of words means creating an enabling environment and the right tactical context for your best actors to thrive, while for as much as possible, minimizing the conditions that make it favorable for your opponent to thrive that is coaching it's management that is a form of management but that is not to say that the entertainment value of football needs to be relegated to the background that's why but what is even entertainment sir please can i i I know that's the question you agree so what is entertainment is it the possessive football because that's not entertaining to me I will celebrate a class more than I will celebrate look, a dribble. At the end of the day, there is a place for every person and what they stand for and what they were able to accomplish. Just to it, help you. There are those who would look at Ancelotti's body of work and celebrate him. The fact that you don't understand the tactical aspects of his job does not mean it is not technical. Look, even what Jude Bellingham said, yes. the issue about giving players freedom. What Jude Bellingham says, it is you who doesn't understand that things that it means he's only a man manager. What he says is that he can make sense of the... When you... You remember soil profile in school? When you break each layer of the soil, yes. the 
various Fire elements. Fire Greek school. Why? Yes, the various elements of the soil Take us to Greek that school. make it possible and collectively gives it its rich ingredients. For which reason, the loamy soil or whatever that we use, the black soil that we use to farm, is fit for purpose, right? When you introduce clay, you will not get the same variable for all the crops that you want to. Yes. So each player, when you break down their profile, there are roles and responsibilities on the pitch that they can perform. It is up to the coach to make sense of all of those players and their unique skill sets so and determine that within this context, I can play Valverde, I can play Tony Cruz, I can play Bellingham and still get the result and what I want. Mm. So in the Real Madrid What Bellingham is saying that in yes. the context of Real Madrid, Ancelotti is able to create the right context for all of them to play their game okay. and give them the... That makes sense. Don't you always refer to some methods as being very reductive? Mm-hmm. As being backward, mm-hmm. as setting or holding some teams back, and and not allow. Danny was explaining how Luis Enrique's methods did not allow Mbappe Kylian Mbappe. To thrive. Have we said about that about any of Real Madrid's players? Nope. That's a good question. The question I really wanted to ask you though was that the Real Madrid team. Yeah. Who is the so Lomi soil? Which one is standing soil? Which one? Oh, then you need Benny 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 is Benny Benny Lomi. Lomi. <laughs> so if you, if, you, if you make a mistake and you bring sandy soil videos to Billingham's Lomi, it's not No, the but, proper sandy but, soil is Rudiger. Rough. Yeah, yeah, they are either way. <laughs> sandy soil. <laughs> but, oh, sir, please, sir, please, I just, just a quick one here. Go on. Uh, sir, please, this is a cup competition. It is a cup competition. It's yes. about progressing. And I like the way Atu started. You see, for people who make that blanket statement, Real Madrid are defensive. Just as Achu said, it means you've not watched Real Madrid enough yes. this season. They are most, and I understand, everybody, we are all fans of the various leagues that we like. So on your Saturday, you probably spend a chunk of your time watching the league that you like. We know that Situ, if he gets Premier League here in Syria here, he will lean towards his. That's Syria. why we have five yeah. teams in Europe and you <laughs> have four. Quick. The league is famous. Quick. Somebody calls them. And this is not me. I saw it somewhere. Mm. Uh-huh. Everybody said uh-huh. that uh, the Premier League, they say he calls them, the ones who, f- let me just be specific, the ones who fixate on Premier League, calls yeah. them blindfolded Premier League fans. Yes. 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 <laughs> blindfolded yes. Premier League. Just yes. say, they've only, you they can't, that's, they can't that's see the only thing they watch. can't see anything. And me, I don't, I, honestly, I don't see anything wrongly because there are people who also watch La Liga. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And they only see Premier League teams so in Champions League. the other leagues to, to, uh-huh. it to, it to when but it was the fundamentals. If you've food. watched Real Madrid enough, even in this season's Champions League, if you've watched Real Madrid enough over the years in UEFA Champions League, you understand that they understand that it's a cup competition better than anybody you else. In cup competitions, you can't go with your your general style, your your philosophy through and through. Something will have to give. There are times where you will meet certain teams who are better than you, who are in used to what they are in certain areas. So you something will have to give. Have to you adapt. have to be you have to adapt. You have to be a bit more pragmatic. And Real Madrid understand that thing better than anybody. When you look at the squad of players they have, obviously, the football they played with Man City isn't, isn't the sort of style we expect them to. But it's even for me, it's even more credit to Ancelotti to be able to get these guys to play this style, be disciplined enough for them to see it through. Number two, the word efficiency, eh, that is where entertainment is. Old. Yes. But most football fans don't know. See, the ball no eh, you don't watch it because of the passing. And, yeah, I'm telling you, you don't know. But you don't watch it because of the passing and the dribbling. No. The passing and the dribbling is a means to an end. Yes. When Messi is giving Sulia, he's dribbling five people. No. The reason why you say Messi is good is because every one Sulia Bia is one goal. Mm-hmm. One Sulia, one assist. It's not one Sulia. Ah, they're like ben, Messi and Ben Affa, they can be on the same. Ben Affa can dribble the whole pack, but not. No, he's true. No, it's true. It's true. It's a means to an end. Yes. What makes it, you see, what made uh, Ronaldinho entertaining to watch and beautiful to watch is because when he's smiling and he's dancing in the hair, at the end of the day, pa on looking assist. And the pa point on is, looking when goal. he dribbles past five players, he's left five players behind and created and space. And he's created space and he's created a chance that yes. will lead to something. Yes. That's the purpose of dribbling. So Go it is the them. efficiency at the end of it that makes, that, that's what makes sense to what he's doing. Yes. So when you say something is entertaining, no, it must bring value. That is why when you go to Atletico Madrid fans, no, see, the true Atletico fans, not the ones who are forced Diego Simeone to play this smelling football. <laughs> the true Atletico fans, the ones who can cross their legs 
after they are leading you one nil in first leg and tell you that if you're a man go and score and two 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 two, two you can't score them ah, they are the ones who celebrate the tackles they celebrate more tackles than the goal because what entertains them is the efficiency of their team's defense yes so when people say that oh real madrid defended and you are giving them credit but when Mourinho was doing it you said the susa Mourinho was losing matches oh yes nobody got up and sacked Mourinho because of his defense his style, style. He had a poor record with uh, uh, Roma at the tail end of his, his Roma career. That's why he was sacked. He wasn't getting results for Manu at the end. That's why he was sacked. Bruno has never been sacked for his style for of play. For his Bruno. style of play. No, no, no. He's held when he's getting results. He's criticized when he's not getting results. Nobody is giving Ateta fans when Arsenal is playing well and losing. We give Ateta fans when Arsenal is playing nicely and they are winning. It is the results at the end of the day that justifies it. And you see, Real Madrid are really efficient. When you talk about attack, me, I don't need to create 10 chances to score one goal. No. I need one chance to score one goal. And if Ancelotti understands the efficiency of his players, he knows that Rodrigo no. if you give him a chance in the ball, he'll score. Especially yes. his Champions League night. Champions League night. Vinicius. He has Jude 30 Bellingham. goal contributions yes. in 30 starts. Yes. Look He's only that. played 50 matches. Yes. yes. And out of the 50, he yes. started 30. Yes. And yes. he has 30, 30 goal, goal, goal contributions. Champions League night. Forget. 20 goals. Deliver. 10 assists. Forget. It's unbelievable. So, now let's talk about the teams on brand. Man City. This is not the first time Man City are creating how many? 33 shots or something and they score just one goal. This is not the first time. No. When you look at games where City have totally, even last season's 4-0 uh, victory against Madrid, if you go and check the body of chances City created, the game could easily have ended 10. Yes. Easily. City miss. They miss a lot of chances. So for a defensive team that is coming, a team that is coming to stop City from playing, you know that, look, at the end of the day, City will by all means create. But what you can do is to limit that volume of chances. Or limit the quality limit of chances. Limit the quality. Even limit the... the. How do I even put this one? They can create a chance, but make sure that the chance falls to the wrong person. Yeah. Yes. That's all tactics. Too. It's all tactics. How you even or, position... Or to your, their weaker foot. Or to yeah. their... It's all instruction. Yes. So when you look at the fact that the whole game, no, Haaland had space. But some way, somehow, City were not able to find him. When you look at how Madrid even marked the box when Haaland went off, it was completely different. Yes. Completely different. Ah, now is it Alvarez they are afraid of? Small boy no then. When you are crossing <laughs> the ball into the box, you know, he's on the wide areas. Why should you be afraid of him? You get it. It's all instruction. At the end of the day, it comes down to efficiency. And Madrid knew, and if you watch the game very well, Madrid's first half game plan was completely different from the yeah. second half. Of course. In the first half, even at extra time. Deadly. When it came to the accountants, yeah. they knew exactly uh, what they There was a point doing. where I tweeted that City were too open. Yeah. Every time Madrid they went forward, the they always looked like they were going to score. They always had runners who were yeah, there were some those spaces. It bounced too high. Vinicius couldn't... You couldn't... Bro, like that, but... If like... See, let, if let, you got it in his stride, just, like to, just to support the point you are making. You see, the people who say that Real Madrid were too... If defending is easy... Go and do something. Go and do something. Because, ah. see, the evidence of the 210 minutes of football that we saw, 90 yeah. minutes in Madrid, 120 minutes in City, is that it pointed to one thing. City cannot defend. Mm. In the whole one, 210 minutes, Man City were in the lead for merely 18 minutes. Yeah. But in the second leg alone... Real Madrid were in the lead for 76 minutes. Yeah. Look, oh, you see? And if you're coaching players to... Well, we're we not discussing this earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Players to abandon their natural, expressive, mm -hmm. attacking nature into conservative, defensive, and what we, what we call... Discipline. It's very difficult because... Yeah. Espe look look so through the Real Madrid yes, players. Look, but over, so the over the two legs, Real Madrid were in the lead. They held the lead yeah. for 160 minutes. Man City... Over the two legs, could no, see, they held the lead for 18 minutes. minutes. So you score, you look, can't look, defend the lead. Look, is that somebody's friends, fault? Friend, just to wrap up, when you want to, when you want to quantify what a chance is, don't go and look at shots too. And saves. Yeah. And saves. Ah, Real Madrid know that City outside the box. Oh, me mm yes, -hmm. So you allow them to shoot. As for the shots, you can take the shots. How dangerous are those shots? That's when maybe the XG will come or the big chances created. Yeah. When you look at those key metrics, Real Madrid and City were basically creating the same. Yeah. The only difference was efficiency. Yeah. So if you want to go at anybody, 
you need to go at Manchester City for not taking their chances. And that's where the aura no cancer. I was telling this boy this morning, I was doing some deep thinking be over there, like Wednesday, Thursday. And I realized something. This soon soon spiritual still we are seeing for Madrid in Champions League. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. it cuts across in almost every dominant team in every sphere. Yeah. Think about Man United under Ferguson. Man United didn't have to play well to win matches. Teams will gain get unexplicable chances like inexplicable empty poor crowd they are missing yes. look at Torres Torres dribbled the game and kicked yeah. the ball out it's the all out like you are not yourself when you are facing no, you are them. playing my United you, and a Ferguson oh, you are leading by two goals to know and some way somewhere United you equalized on the 80th one. minute you are still you know leading you, you are still leading but you know you have lost, you know lost. Susu. body language everything changes and I was even making it practical for myself if you are playing let me just give you uh, listeners this but for those of us, Ronaldo is starting against our, our fire. Ah, quick. So, yeah. uh, hat trick income. Yes, quick. Masa, Chale- Masa, Masa. Hey, just a quick one. Just to make it a bit more yes. practical. We didn't I'm talk about Arsenal. Yeah, we'll ah, get, we'll get it. See, oh, you get it. Get it. Chale- mm-hmm. Just a quick one. This, one, this is my last point. When you play FIFA, for those of us who play FIFA, yes. when you are playing somebody you know is your senior player, and you slack and you score one goal, you are doing what you are doing, and all of a sudden the person gets some chance. Maybe you do some skill, you know, since for when he hits back. Ta- all of a sudden, I know that the game is over. Yeah. You are leading, you know. Yes. But you, like, yes, no. you are the one holding the controller, yes, but no. you can't control the game. Yes. That's the aura. That aura, it can happen you to everybody. You see that skill, you don't know how they do it. You don't did know it. how they think. And sometimes, you will see from the middle of the pack. Say, mm, go no back. You, just, you, <laughs> can, you can tell. Like, you can tell. You know that. But you see, Tahiru, that is credit to the team you are facing. Yeah. That's true. The Brenner won't miss that chance if it was a... Uh, 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 this week, Luton Town. Oh, oh quick. what's Luton Town? Chelsea. If they scat the ball back, you ever get that against Petrovic? Wait, are, you are you saying that? Are you saying that this weekend they are beating Chelsea? If you yeah, cut yeah, the yeah, ball I'm back, if Doku cuts the ball back for uh, uh, this thing, uh, KDB, KDB and it is Onana in the pool. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but when it's but Real Madrid, Luton that is afraid. When it, no, it's not really no. It's Real Madrid. Is that thinking. extra? Pr- thank you. He's that extra thinking. pressure to get it right. Oh, so because mm, and you could see Man City. First, second, I started. I'm watching the game. I'm like, why? Are they? I was running college in my head. Why are they panicking? Yeah. Like, you beat these guys for new last season, but why are you panicking? And you're all I know. When you are big, you are big. It'd be simple. Soon, soon. Simple. Uh, and no, no, no. Fentus. Fentus. Hey. Uh, it says Mutu, so Fentus. <laughs> hey. Who better stayed your whole at it? See. Quick the- one. Jimmy Carragher surprises me when he m- m- says what Make he says. Me. But, uh, and everybody else. And I've always said that. The fact they started watching at Twitter, the fact they started watching football in the Tiki Taka era doesn't mean that is How all there is, always is to played. football. And for anybody who is surprised at what Carlo Ancelotti is doing with this Real Madrid team this season, how he shaped this team up, hasn't seen enough of Ancelotti or doesn't have a retentive memory of something Ancelotti did and famously did. When Jimmy Carragher's uh, Liverpool team met uh, AC Milan in that famous comeback in the Champions League final. 0-5. The team setup of AC Milan is the same setup as you see. He played the box midfield with Pelo doing the cruise job, yeah. Seedorf doing the uh, Kamavinga job, yeah, Gattuso doing the Clarence Seedorf yeah, job, Kaka. and then Kaka doing the Bellingham job. They played Crespo and Shevchenko in Futo. Rodrigo and Vinicius. Yes. The difference in, in the back line, there was Jabstam, there was uh, Nexta, there was Cafudos Maldini. 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 The difference is. The quality in that AC Milan team and the profile of players he had fits naturally. So in Vini and Rodrigo, who are naturally wide play- players, he had Sh- Shiva and then Crespo, who are proper strikers. In Kaka, who is naturally a gifted number 10, yeah. could play at the tip of that. And then Andrea Pelo, deep line playmaker, boss, who, receiving but, the ball like Tony Cruz would receive. There's Seedorf, who has a brilliant technician. In what maybe Valverde will give him the energy, and there's Gattuso, who will slip in like Kamavinga would do. To help Tony Cruz maintain a double pivot at times, how do you play what, against how, that? How have you seen? How have you seen Carlo Ancelotti all these years? But see that, but and look at this Real Madrid team and not be able to connect that. See, that's, a, this that's a point. He could not make sense of it, even when he experienced it. So when he sees it being, but they met again two years later. It was yeah, exactly no, the same. How do you? Yeah. No, how do you? How do you watch Ancelotti and not and what this Real Madrid team? You don't even have to be a, a, an ex player, but for anybody who has seen enough football. How do you watch this Real Madrid team set up and what them this season and not remember that it is no new for Carlo? 
Look. Mm -hmm. So when Bellingham got into the team, and everybody was like, how is he going to play? And if we stop... Ah, Daniel he, has, I, you know, Daniel he just I, bought a new kaka. Daniel and I That's discussed the this at the start of the, the, start of the season, how he was going to use Bellingham. And we referenced what he had done with mm -hmm. that AC Milan team. And we had not seen Real Madrid even play any friendly game. -o. And then Pepe... Pepe, 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 Pepe. And that is also why Bellingham is scoring as many goals as he is. And because Kaka that's exactly how Kaka was doing it. Kaka will get into the... And we know Shev Shevchenko is not like Crespo, who is very much in the box. And even Shev 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 uh, 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 Crespo and Dakalo was very mobile. So I can't understand how anybody would think that this is not by design, but by accident and question... And by luck. The, the, tactical, they have used the, the, luck. the tactical brilliance of Carlo. It's, it doesn't make sense. What makes sense Let's get into the game. Oh. Briefly, I was going to say what makes sense is Arsenal getting no, 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 out. forget Arsenal. Now, this is the game, the winner is coming from this game. The winner of the Champions League, we talk about Arsenal briefly, but you see, <laughs> <laughs> but the other side of the road, no, but, no, but, but you see, no, try. see, the way he's also forget about Arsenal, no, nice, but no, no, believe me, okay, if you ask I'll, give me I'll give you three minutes. Oh, three minutes is f f enough, thank you very much. Thanks, you see, I want to do something about this game, yes, and I want people to realize that. Pep Guardiola lost this game. But everybody's talking about Carlo Ancelotti. And then he establishes the premise that if Carlo Ancelotti plays the way he played against City at the Etihad every weekend, he'll be sacked at the end of the season. Yes. If he's come in his own box by Levante, yeah. Las Palmas, Girona, Cadiz, Atletico Madrid, he'll be sacked. But the reason why Florentino Perez will sleep and sleep good is because this is a one-off fixture that that the 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 success of it is far bigger than any approach in the game yes you, you get it if madrid play this way every weekend you are not too hopeful but if madrid are going to do this in a one-off game then you can be proud of the hard work of the team because we saw them only last week in the first leg. This is not how they played. Yeah. But listen, at the Etihad, it doesn't matter who you are. If you go and joke in that stadium, Emotion. they will disgrace. And we saw them only last. I, I thought I everybody had, has suffered their own fate today. Bro, and I, they took four there last season. Bro, Chelsea have taken six there before. Man, you six. They, if, ah, see, if you Liverpool, do, they will disgrace five. you. Everybody now, Carlo Ancelotti realizes Thank this, you. and you see what did he mean? Help City was. The time Real Madrid got their goal. It was perfect timing for Real. It was perfect timing. So Real Madrid now needed to wait for another moment to go again. Mm -hmm. And those moments came. But maybe, not maybe, they couldn't find the right passes and the right touches at the time Billingham will fall over. Somebody will make the right, right run. So it was all coaching. The application maybe in, in when Madrid were breaking were not always perfect. But you could see it. Yeah. When you watch football, don't only look at the team with the ball. Look at the team without it as well. That gives right. you a lot of information. Look, when Pep, I don't know John Stones' issue, whether he's injured or not. Friends, I've said this on this platform in many places that yeah. this season City has struggled against every big team. You watch City play against Chelsea, and you are all praising De Sassi and Malo Gusto. Yet against Madrid, you say Madrid have a problem with the way they played. It was so easy for Chelsea to have that 1-1 one, one draw with City because Chelsea only asked them to go wide. City in the wide areas now are toothless. So Real Madrid are comfortable to play very narrow in the middle. And then ask City to go on, take Fela Mendy on. Let's see if Fodin has got the better of him. Let's see if Grealish can get the better of Cavallo. And throughout the whole game, Pep couldn't find a solution for it. To make matters worse, when Pep's free eights in Bernardo... Silva and uh, Kevin De Bruyne were trying to find spaces and he brought on, he pushed up Akanji. When Akanji had balls in very good areas, his inability, he didn't have the quality, he didn't have the quality to even let the ball roll across his body and face Man City. So what does he do? He sends the ball back to Rodri when there's a big space be behind him between the match Madrid midfield and the defenders. If John Stones is in that position, it is easier. So I don't know if he was injured. So he's more technically gifted. Far better, but you spoke about City being toothless in the in the wide area. In the way that where the equalizer came from when he brought on Jeremy Doku. So they are, so I'm coming there. Now Pep realizes that the only place they can go, where the midfield is done, they can't play through them, is to go wide. 
Jack really disappointed me. And earlier today, Danny was even mentioning it. Because you forced Kavahal into a yellow card. After which, you were not doing what you were supposed to do when it came square to him. Yeah. But credit to Madrid. You see, when you watch football, eh, <laughs> watch what the coaches are doing, you know. When Kavaya got that, that yellow card, Kavaya stopped playing as a right back. Kavaya played as an extra center back. Yeah. And Freddy Valverde started playing like a right back. So when Grealish got the ball, Grealish was being confronted by Valverde instead of Kavaya, who was that on the card. True. That is true. So Kavaya no on the second yellow. <laughs> it was very deep. It was the guy was deep. Yeah. Very deep. Yes. And here's the so twist. You wouldn't get him on the one. Well, where, 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 where are you taking him to? Now, smart coach. this is the problem I've said since I've got in wide areas. None of their wide players have shown any level of consistency, even in 90 minutes game. Mm. So Pep throws on Jeremy Duke, who for the first eight minutes of the time he was on the pitch, showed what he was made of, after which he was nothing else in the game. After he created a goal, after he you was created, useless. Th that was it. Now, this is the problem Pep has faced. Whoever and Phil Foden is not a typical winger, so he doesn't have the best of pace and the tricky area to get around fullbacks. Now, if Jeremy Doku could have done what he did in the first seven minutes of the game that he came on for 90 minutes, every fullback is done. He will cook you, and that is what Sterling and Sunny and Maris used to do. For 90 minutes, these guys will, will terrorize your fullbacks. This season, City have not got any player capable of doing that. So Jeremy Doku comes, he helps in creating the first goal, and then he's done. Like He's, in, he's gone back to his, he's, he's done. Gazi winger. He can't do anything again. And unfortunately for City and Pep, you see, let me say this. Pep wasn't bold. City's best player this season is Phil Foden. Pep hasn't Fuck. been bold enough, bold enough in big games to play Phil Foden in positions where he will thrive. So why was Bernardo Silva central and Phil Foden wide? White. The whole time. The whole time. Because in the areas where Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva were playing, I think Phil should have taken one of those spots. Because in the wide area, he's only a decoy. He's not very much involved in getting things to happen. And Kevin De Bruyne is not in great form. Credit to him, he scored the goal, first goal. But for the second chance that he missed, this is my thinking. And I'll wrap it up sweetly. The first goal is a brilliant goal, fence. It's a brilliant goal. Yes. Because Rudiger was still on the ground. And Ludin had covered the first post. If he goes across the turf, Rudiger blocks it. If he goes to the near post, Ludin saves. saves it. So what does he do? He goes to the roof of the net. But in going to the roof of the net, the position of the shot and the goal post is so short that the ball can't fly over the, over the, over the post. It will fly into the roof. Few minutes or few seconds after, he gets another opportunity and applies the same technique. Tries to repeat it. He tries to go to the roof. The difference here is, and I'm thinking that for a player who has processed everything I've just said, is intelligent, of course. He would put everything I've just said. It's still fresh in his memory what he had done and scored only moments earlier. He's trying to repeat the same trick, except that this time the, the distance, distance between the, the time, the, the effort, and the goal is is bigger. Was oh, farther. It's, it's, it's farther. That's the right way there. Thank you. So he hits the ball. And instead of the ball climbing into the roof, it climbs over the bar. And that's what Danny says. If that is PSG, if that is Man United, if that is even Barca, he tries something on a different. Champions League night, Kevin De Bruyne places the ball into the side of the net. But when you play against Roma, they do have won 14. Aura. 14. Aura. <laughs> and the team that comes second has seven. How do you explain it? Aura. How do you explain that Real Madrid, Shoo -shoo. Real Madrid went on <laughs> to beat Chelsea, beat uh, PSG, beat uh, uh, City and beat Liverpool in the final in the manner they did. How do you explain that a football club like Real Madrid two centre-backs, they've not been part of the season. Their first choice. Courtois is not catching. They don't have a striker. Left back. Their, they, their left back has been injured. Chouameni has been in and out. Vinicius Jr. has been out for like two and a half months this season. Rodrigo has had an off-season for like two months. He was you, off. You people don't even say it enough. Lunin is third choice. Lunin is third choice. You. How do you explain to me that a club has gone through all of this and are in the Champions League semi-final, if not for soon 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 soon. <laughs> <laughs>
rightful owners of the UEFA Champions League. Um, remember, of course, uh, the live commentary is on this network, and that's because we are building up to the Hits FM Rep Your Jersey at the Vieson Social Centre. It's on the 1st of June. That's the day of the Champions League final. So be on the lookout for promo stuff coming to this network. 103.9 Hits FM as well as 99.7 Joy FM. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see which two teams make the final. But keep your messages coming. This is Game Plan on 99.7 Joy FM, 103.9 Hits FM. Uh, it's also streaming live on Twitter Spaces. Uh, X spaces and I see lots of you who are tuning right now. Leave me a message. Use the hashtag game plan on Twitter. If you prefer WhatsApp, 55 is the WhatsApp number. I've seen lots of your messages have coming. I'll read them, uh, but also keep sending them because when I come back from this very, very short break, I'll be reading messages. So if you don't send your message now, I wouldn't be able to read it for you. Uh, we've got a conversation to be had on the creation of new national teams uh, here as well as Arsenal because lots of Arsenal fans want to hear what the guys have to say about their team uh, and their exit. Liverpool Sicho uh, says Liverpool uh, 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 have, their season has crashed already I, I disagree with him. I'm your fluke What do you mean fluke? Ah, quadruple now, Treble. Treble. Double Now it's double Bo. Oh, but, yeah, but he's been coming down by, by the end of next two weeks it would have been single. No, it would be leveled <laughs> ball. <laughs> because <laughs> quadruple, treble, double, double, double ball. ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't have a serious conversation about them after the Arsenal game. Uh, we'll talk about that very shortly. Uh, remember, game plan is what you buy. Petrosaur as well as DSC, uh, DSTV. But Petrosaur says every drop matters just as every penny counts. Good quality fuel enhances your vehicle performance and reduces maintenance costs. So take no risk in times like this. All you need is value for your money. And now they're increasing the fuel prices. Basa, 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 basa. So buy quality fuel. Okay. Uh, so just go to the next Petrosol fuel station uh, for your clean, accurate quantities uh, fuel suitable for new technology vehicles. Be a happy customer. Feel with smiles. Drive more miles and save some money. Petrosol, your clean, quality fuel in full quantity. Petrosol. It's always a delightful experience. And you can watch all of the world's biggest leagues on DSTV. Uh, of course, uh, the Europa League, the UEFA Champions League, all of the action is live on DSTV. You can uh, get yourself a brand new DSTV decoder with a dish as well. Or just resubscribe to DSTV. Also, it's time to tell you about the uh, Joy News Impact Makers Awards in a land where dreams are often cradled in the arms of hope there exists a league of unsung heroes and they are the silent actors of change the torchbearers who eliminate parts where there was only darkness these are the change makers who sculpt the future of our nation stitch by stitch unknown to them their acts of selflessness have resonated across the land stirring the hearts of many and sparking a movement of recognition and celebration why not try do we? Hey, events man, sir. What to bro fool? If he comes in and his people, you will you don't understand English. Anyway, it's that time of the year again. Uh, and uh, Joy News, with support from the McDown Foundation, brings you the Joy News Impact Makers Awards 2024. Join us in our quest to spotlight and other those steadfast warriors who are remolding uh, the destiny of our communities and our nation. The Joy News Impact Makers Award celebrating ordinary people making extraordinary impact. The Joy News Impact Makers Awards is proudly brought to you by DBS Industries. We truly are your roof experts. Gold Key Properties building prestige since 1997 and First National Bank. How can we help you? And of course, the McDonald Foundation building a better community. Joy News, independent, fearless, credible. We'll be right back. You worked hard for your money, and DSTV gives you a whole lot more for a lot less than you think. Ooh. Instead of one takeout dinner, how about treating the family to a whole month of the best entertainment with DSTV? From thrilling sports, blockbusters, captivating series, to entertaining kid shows, we have it all. Totally awesome! And with DSTV Stream, you can watch on the go. I'm here! Plus, you can choose a package to suit your pocket. There's a whole lot more to enjoy for a lot less than you think with DSTV. Joy 99.7.
99.7 FM. All right, that was a brief break. Uh, this is Game Plan on 99.7 Joy FM. It's 33 minutes after the hour, 2 p.m. We're going all the way till 3, so we have just about 27 minutes or so left uh, on our remaining conversation. But let me tell you about the Infants Supreme Pim All Boys Association, MOBA. It is set to hold the induction service for the newly elected National Executive Committee members led by the Ebusia Opinion elect. Moses Gracie Baden Jr. It's on Sunday, 28th of April, 2024, at the Calvary Methodist Church in Adabraka at 3 p.m. Join us for a day filled with excitement, camaraderie, and networking as we welcome the new National Executive Committee. For any further inquiries, kindly contact the Mobile Secretariat on 050-318-6258 uh, or the uh, mobile number 249 702 696. Uh, uh, what's the is did anybody it, uh, hold on? Did anyone go to Presec here in this building? No, Danny K. Which school? Oh, wait, you finished at Shimota. Okay, so that's so you don't qualify. Uh, 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 Sichu, which other school did you finish? For a penny, which one is that? Nobody here. Okay, okay, the one who went to school in Accra. Friend is asking which one is that. Hey, How wait. Do you answer which one is Offer your opinion. Offer your opinion. It's in Kofredia. Yeah, Kofredia. Yeah. Why do you say yeah? Like you are not sure. No, it's not in Kofredia, Kofredia, but people because Kofredia is just. Oh, it's in Kofredia. Yes, in Kofredia. Is it a boys' school or mixed school? Mixed school. Mixed. That's, mixed school. that's where I found my wife. How do I find my wife in a in a, in a boys' school? Wait, you found your wife in secondary school? Yeah, I, but Tahiru, you know the story. So why are you now making this? Ah, my childhood lover. What do you mean childhood lovers? They call them high school sweet. No, I miss my childhood baby girl. When we, you know, you go define the time for me. I'm shocked. You don't be serious. Why? They know be a night. You, you want to do sweet at you? Child, want to do childhood girl. lover. Hey. From, yeah. At you, where do Someone you know, I see him, I say quick. Ah, quick. This one there. Pa. Ask him, where, <laughs> did you, where did you find your wife? <laughs> <laughs> where did you find your wife? That's, that's the wrong question. <laughs> You're asking the wrong question. <laughs> God. You look, I are not fine. Oh. <laughs> Never mind that guy. Kwa <laughs> kind. I wanted one of you to say it. That's why I was yeah, my asking. big bro, my big bro is in Boche. I don't know about Bianca. Mm. Okay. Anyway, uh, all right. Listen, uh, guys, let's go to the messages. 055 1111 Oh, just before that. Um the full gospel businessmen's fellowship international garden is proud to announce the holding of the first fgbmfi distinguished footprints award ceremony at the la Palm beach hotel on saturday 20th of uh 20th of april 2024 that's tomorrow at 6 p.m uh the fgbmfi distinguished footprints award celebrates distinguished individuals including its own outstanding volunteers churches parachurch organizations as well as members of the general public who have demonstrated excellence patriotism and integrity join us to applaud the values that define true leaders including men and women who have excelled at the national level in their contributions towards agriculture and food security environmental sustainability politics and governance and public spiritedness they didn't mention sports, but we are adding ourselves in there. The Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship International is the largest Christian businessmen and women's organization in the world. So remember, 6 p.m., La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, 20th of April, 2024. And, of course, be there or be squared. What's the scene? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, um, McCarthy Hill. This, oh, this is Daniel from McCarthy Hill in a crowd who says, this Danny case response is something else. So, Aish, I think he's talking about the <coughs> bad man cry. Uh, all right. Abeku, Ubeshe you. Okay. Let's look at some more message. Good afternoon, guys. The English club should continue to tickle themselves and be laughing at them. Okay, and be laughing that this is the best leak in the world because of money and not focusing on the real game. Hope in Odumasi Krobo. With a bit of a warning uh, to uh, the English Premier League fans. Okay, let me take some more. This one says, "Good, uh, good morning." I'm bedroom Pep Guardiola from Ontario, ah. Canada. <laughs> yes, he's still experiencing morning. 
He's in Ontario, Canada. Why not? And he says, um, okay, let me get your message right. All right, cool. Dennis' prediction didn't work this time around. Arsenal and Man City couldn't qualify. Can Chelsea beat City on Saturday? How can you say PSG were lucky, Danny? Barca fans act like it's impossible to win a Champions League game with 10 men. Chelsea won against prime Barcelona in the UCL semi-final with an early red card. Uh, what are you guys saying? I know. I wanted to stick it to them. But yeah, John Terry got sent off. Chelsea still ended up with a 2 all draw. So like I said... Playing like Ancelotti's Roman. Yes, game. thank you. So some things are not for everybody. <laughs> Apparently, it's not for Barcelona. They can't. They get one red card. They cry, meh, 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 meh. And lose... Wait, what was the full-time score, Crash? 3-1. 4-1. Four, one. Four, one. Four, one. Mm. You lose 4-1 because you had a man sent off. A man sent off at home. Chelsea had a man sent off at Barcelona. They were go down and still ended up drawing 2-2. Two, two. Oh, my word. Chelsea Football Club. I love you. This one says... Okay, this is a, a message from Dale. Texting us from Madrid. He says, you guys are doing well. And he says, in the competitive football, um, we look for a winner. Thus, you must use everything professionally right in the game to win, including avoiding mistakes. Thus, the better teams, uh, the better teams won, according to you. Real Madrid, we won genuinely. We need to stop the cheap propaganda and allow teams to play their game as they deem fit. Pedigree is also hard work. We are happy here in Madrid. Hashtag Hala Madrid. Hashtag Apollo 15. The 15 is coming. Apollo 15. Yes. Uh, I almost said Apollo 15. <laughs> <laughs> Dale, thank you very much for your message. Listening to us all the way from Madrid. This one says, uh, Godiola is a marathon coach or a league coach. He doesn't do well with cup matches. Hey. And that's where the likes of Mourinho flourish. Just more um, <laughs> what was the last time Mourinho was good in the cup matches? Oh, only it? last only last year he won the conference. conference. Uh, Wilson. But Pep is a better cup manager than Mourinho mm, too. So. Make you know okay. Wilson He's won more cups than him. So. Wilson sent us that message. Uh, this message says, Hello, fan. Uh, ask your guys... Who defended very well against Man City at the Etihad? Arsenal in their nil-nil draw or Real Madrid on Wednesday? Oh, no, no, Arsenal. 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 Stanley Arsenal. in Achimota. Have you seen the quotes coming through, though? David Ancelotti says they studied yeah. Arsenal's yeah, Arsenal. defensive shape yes. Yeah. Yes. against, yeah. Arsenal, but they were brilliant. So, in other words, what, situ or what the guys are saying here is that Real Madrid's game was fashioned off of Arsenal's game against Man City. So, yeah, but yeah. Arsenal like the sum sum against. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tojo from Tema Newtown says, "Why all these national teams? I don't understand the age difference at all." All right, I will get into that briefly. More messages. Papasi in a Prade says, um, "Yes, he says, uh, please be gentle with Arsenal. Why we are bleeding still." All right. Okay. Thank you. I'll start a bleeding, he says. Uh, and this one just says, okay. This was, uh, he said we should wish his daughter a happy, a belated happy birthday. And you don't tell us your daughter's name. So happy birthday to your daughter. <laughs> uh, oh, she uh, send, send the name. Send the name of your daughter. The, uh, the uh, name. Yes. So we'll the give your daughter so shout that's, out. You give the shout out. Yeah. Uh, Danny K, there's no other person to give this to than you. Arsenal against Bayern Munich. It didn't quite happen over two legs. They lost three to an aggregate. I don't want to do dwell too much on it. Oh, no. Tyru, it's all about Sum Sum and Aura. <laughs> no, to be honest. Look, uh, I, I like to look at football in a strictly scientific manner. But it looks like every Champions League season, I'm reminded to add a bit of Sum Sum to the analysis. The, the, and the, the English word for Sum Sum is pedigree. Yeah, pedigree. Heritage and pedigree. Aura. Look, Aura. When, Aura. You, when you watch that, when you watch that Bayern Arsenal game, you could... You could clearly see something just switched on in the Bayern Munich players and the manager their minds. From the start, yes, you need to credit both teams. I think um, Tuko starting with Masrawi and uh, Guerrero down the left hand side was as a response to what happened in the first leg, yes. where he saw both goals came with Arsenal over overloading the right uh, hand side and then creating space and then scoring. So he dealt with that, and that was a brilliant tactical plan. But even in spite of that, I think. In that first half, I, I was surprised Arsenal were not able to get a goal. But straight from second half, you could just tell. When you were watching the game, 
you can see the space that Arsenal can thrive in. But it just wasn't happening. And Bayern Munich, something just switched on. Their players were everywhere. They, are, they were winning all the duels. They, were, they just looked a bit more committed. And for me, you could just tell that they didn't understand how they would go home against Arsenal. That, that's just how I, I saw They can't be kicked like, out by Arsenal. They can't be kicked out by Arsenal. If anybody will kick us out, it's not this team. That's, that's just how I saw it. And Arsenal were... And this is something that because to has be fair, like followed said, them for a very long time. Okay. Arsenal were afraid of the consequences of failure. It shows, it shows a lot when it comes to the critical time with this. In, the, in fact, in the club. It's, it, we saw that Champions League against Barcelona. When they, they don't know how to play without fear. And for me, it's surprising. Especially at the critical point. For me, I'm looking at a club who nobody expects you to go and win Champions League. You're facing Bayern Munich. Like, I don't know how difficult it is to motivate yourself not to be afraid. Like, what is there to be afraid? If you go out, what? It's not a disaster. It's more of a disaster if Bayern gets kicked out in the quarterfinal story. against Arsenal. So, I, do, I really don't understand how the Arsenal players seem so nervous in that second half. They, just, they were just switched off. And the reason why I'm not blaming Arteta is, tactically, as I'm saying, if you watch the game, you could see that in as much as Bayern were doing really good, it was also the fine details of commitment from the Arsenal players, willingness to also win certain duels, going into tackles, um, taking initiative in some in some situations, and they just didn't. They just lacked that, and you could tell that once they didn't score that goal in the first half, it clearly affected their thinking going into the second half. And Bayern ran all over them. In fact, in the last ten in the last ten minutes it was <laughs> it was almost like a comedy because Bayern didn't look afraid. Like Arsenal were looking for a goal, but Arsenal looked scared that they would score. Like that's that, that's how it looked like. So they enter the box and an extra pass will create space, but they are rushing a shot, or they are taking a very silly decision, passing it sideways. It was just off. And look at the last corner kick from Saka. I'm not sure. In what fact, was going one day. no, now no, now I have to see it. It's not just the well, last corner kick. Okay. Something happened before the last corner kick. Oh, free kick! Somebody has done a uh, we winning free oh, kick. Oh, sweet oh, area. Yeah. And what's the thing again? When the free kick pine on, the director said, bah! then they went to uh, the big boys who were coming from the back. Yeah. Oh, before the big are no. coming, you Saka. The they early, I, didn't, I didn't see what the motivation what was. What was that for? to Ben White. Then they win the corner. Then then you go and he play the corner to the first man like with no, nothing. This is the same thing right, Enzo. Right, it's right, the right, same right. thing Enzo did in the Carabao Cup final. Those small boys, when you give them hype, small, they think they've reached. And so did the same thing. <laughs> Last minute, Chelsea had a free kick. A very juicy area. Yeah. Then he just took they it quick the, and yeah, spots yeah. the whole yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Force it. Last one. You boom it into the box. You and never know what. I, I, I want to ask happen. a quick question. What do you make of Atete's statement that they don't have a striker that can score 30 to 40 goals and they must live with that? No, Is that a suggestion of... No, it's... it's I, I take it with a pinch of salt. It's basically like what Pep said that Highland and this one said he wanted to come off. Asheno, the thing no Asheno. Oh, but, but he's I, trying to yeah. find. No, but I also think. I no, think, no, I think no, 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 no. I'm saying that because the same man at the start of the season said they didn't need. That's that what I was getting at. Yeah, so is no, it ad- admission now that perhaps it is something that you would have liked a striker? No, but 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 when you look at when look at Arsenal have only scored a goal less fewer than the, City. Yeah. No, but no, but last season they were sc- breaking their uh, goal scoring. The best, no, actually, the best response I've seen from anybody is that the one with that kind of striker cries out. No, but I think I think on a, on, a ser- on a serious note, Arteta realizes that he needs a striker, and Arsenal have in the last 12, 18 months or so been looking for a striker. They've been looking to bring in Ivan. Tony was too expensive in January. I don't they didn't bring that. Him do you know? You know, I'm still looking that. at bringing a striker. Last season, and that's what they brought Gabriel. Last season, when they brought in Gabriel Jesus, we all knew that Gabriel Jesus wasn't going to be that prolific striker yeah. for them. If you look at the last months of last season, that cost them. We all saw it. It cost them. But do you think then they he goes knew into that? The, no, he goes into the summer transfer window again. Doesn't buy a striker. And then justifies no one's try. But like three or four times, why he didn't think he needs a striker. Um, I've got then a, he reaches this point when he has about, probably one of the best attacks in the. What about all the links to Isaac though? That, because the Isaac is really not prolific. Me, I think that thing is. I is, think Arsenal. I, I think it's a, an admission that they need a striker. No, no but, I, but, I, but me, his senior brother friend. or his mentor Pep Guardiola has go buy striker before he chop Champions League. Make it didn't do too no. Yeah, but, uh, but make him buy striker and do that. But he hasn't even won. You should think about it. But let me don't say. Let me focus on Pep. No, if you look at the balance of the game, Arsenal's problem was not having a goal scorer. In even 
check the, the chances they created or even the attempt on goal. It took up to the 88 minutes for Arsenal to register their second shot in that second half. No, the first Arsenal had... In the second, yeah, I'm talking second, about in the second yeah. half. The two shots in the second half were 42 minutes apart. Yeah, Fort, but you see, it's not 42. just about... You see, the thing is... No, when the thing about having a striker is also modifies the way you play. There, there is that. So let's say Fence if they me. had a striker, I'm not Fence sure. Me. So, me. so the team if itself has me. not been great. And how they plan... No this, serious team should go without a striker. See, how they, how they plan this... Pepe Nadamo. Danny mentioned <laughs> the collapse at the end of last season. We're seeing the same thing again. Last season, the whole of, in the whole of the month of April, Arsenal did not win a match. Yeah, the, the April whole of April. Thing. In the yeah. month of April. Yeah. This month this as well, ago, the same. they won the first two matches and they failed to win any of the four matches that are ah, followed. Charlie, we are halfway through April. Relax. Okay. Uh, uh, Benjamin Clinton says, uh, uh, he says, um, we are the coolest, talking about the Barcelona game. We've learned our lessons and we are going to take it forward. <laughs> okay. Uh, Barcelona trophy. I've got, I've got a oh, wait, wait, Barcelona <laughs> trophy. Let's see this season. Eh? Uh, I've got that. a message here from Chief Seydou <laughs> Adamu, uh, our brother. Listen to us all the way from DC, Washington. Mm, quick. Fent. It seems many people are now seeing Real Madrid and their style of play because they don't rely on the flamboyant style of football. They've always had the tough and ragged defenders to do the type of that type of job. They did it against Man City last Wednesday. You check this list of former Real Madrid defenders, and it provides me a list. Walter Samuel, Allah, Fabio Cannavaro, Pepe, Rudiger, Sergio Ramos, Ivan Helguera, Michel Salgado, Fernando Hierro, Aito Kranka, Rafael Varane. But These are not... Is there a team in the world that does not have a history of rugged defenders? Uh, they Every are. team has them. Man City hasn't. Oh, Yes, Man City. Uh, Ruby Diaz, Mandy Mandy Mangala. No, I want to mend Mangala. Ruby Diaz, Mangala. Diaz mm. Vincent Company. Vincent Company. No, if you know, if you take our company, the rest Ruby of them Diaz are is so oh, rugged, eh? No, I don't think so. Yeah, Ruby Diaz. Ruby Diaz. Diaz. He is not that can do nice things. Otamendi. 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 You forgot him. Mangala. I like you, Mangala. Otamendi. The match no starts if he shows. He shows. Hey, what about having this fight? What about what about having this fight? Uh, so <laughs> my boy uh, Paul uh, FPSU, he says, I'm enjoying the discussion. Let Ateta suffer with his pride of not getting a striker. Keep up the good way. Um, I want us to talk about the creation of a new national team. But I cannot, for the life of me, not talk about Liverpool's collapse. <laughs> what is going on there? Fred, I've told you this before. All of clubs big boys who need to carry the team it's almost as if it was better when these players were injured and you had to rely on the young boys than they being fit look that mohammed salah chanda he missed on the 38th minute the ball over the top for him goalkeeper is approaching there's big space behind the goalkeeper he's trying to get the ball over the goalkeeper and he just completely misses the mark if salah scores that goal when it's 2-0 well. i guarantee you liverpool would win and i said it before the second leg atlanta are not comfortable playing at bergamo i can't explain why but they are just more fluid or they are better when they play away from home. And we saw the, how they started the game yesterday. And with Liverpool not taking the chances, some of the chances they created, Atalanta grew into the game. And the second half, it didn't look like Atalanta were going to concede. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The game was still like, you, you won't score, we won't score. score yeah. yeah, and, and that was it. But the big issue now for Klopp is how he gets these boys to play. And listen, for Mohamed Salah, we've always known that getting to the end of the season, he's always burning out because... The way he's played over the years, the way he plays over the years, he has a great start to the season. But when the season is about to end, it was Sadio Mane who was scoring the most important goals. Going, they ran up into the Champions League final that they lost against Real Madrid. And it's always been money, money, money around this time of the season. Salah, historically with Liverpool, has not necessarily had, you know, 10 goals in 5 games. He doesn't. It's repeating itself. It's now glaring because... The rest of them... The rest of them are not bailing him out. Yeah. Uh, Luis Diaz some way. Darwin Nunez you know, credit. Uh, Jota has just returned from injury. Cody Gakko plays well, but he's not a natural finisher. So all of a sudden, the salad that we saw at the start of the season that we are not seeing now is greatly affecting Liverpool because the rest are not shining. And they're out of uh, the, the, the Europa League and now have to try and win the league, which I don't think they've got what it takes to, considering uh, how they are playing. That's, that is wild. I want to hear from the Liverpool fans because it looks like Liverpool could potentially well the thing is if 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 Man City do eliminate Chelsea, which looks 
likely. I, I can't I can't see how Liverpool wins the FA Cup. But Liverpool not in the FA Cup. Hey, who is in the FA Cup? My United oh, and commentary. Why are you putting them in situations oh, and competitions that they I are not in? I beg your pardon. Eh? Okay, you I want to force God to win? You want to force God to win? Ah, they've won one trophy already. 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 Hard guy like you, pa. You they support Chelsea? Glory, glory, man. You. Oh, I thought he was supporting some <laughs> better team. Sport it, sport it. Man, you fan they come teach Chelsea fan in this my, season. My then they there, I just go finish above them. You watch. Oh my sir. Oh yeah, down there. I know the doubt crowd. Um, Arsenal and Casano. The more we look hopeful, then the opposite takes place. <laughs> but still, the Gunners was Vinicius part of the penalty lineup that Papa see. He was with that. out of the game. Yeah, he was part of the game. That's what really matters. At that time, they are so got, been substituted had been subbed. Yeah. Um, I've got uh, a couple of messages from Twitter that I wanted to share. Um, Jeremiah Johnson says, Sicho, you spoiled there, Charlie. That was some brilliant analysis. It's actually the conclusion of the whole matter. If anyone still disagrees with this, then the person is some way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my guy. Oh, my guy. Oh, my guy. Um, <laughs> Hello says, I love the raw word used by Sichu. Catching for Kotoa <laughs> not being around. And Black Bean says, Pep overthought the first half until the 65th minute. He played Bernardo on the left and Foden right wing. City's loss is on him any day, all day. He is fraud, he says. And he says, why was Stones benched? Huh? This defeat no be Carlo Masterclass. Be a, it be Pep overthinking attitude. It's not, that sounds familiar. Every time Pep loses, he overthought. Every time he wins, he's a genius. Very interesting. Uh, actually, let me show this to you. The creation of all the new national teams. Um, the FA says it is to enable them uh, ensure that all of the talents go through the conveyor belt and no talent is missed. Yeah. They also say it's to create an avenue for all the coaches they are training to you know to transfer that knowledge to the players at an elite level um but going through it at all those levels it's starting to feel that some of them are a little bit redundant because some of those age categories overlap is that the same feeling you have or you think this is actually a very like a, you know a brilliant move at, like the fa is touting it i don't have a problem with the age categories um the first question i ask myself when I saw that, was where are the talents going to come from? Who's going to produce the talents for them to then be identified and then spotted in that pool? For five years, the FA has tried to work with the Ministry of Education where to in include what they do or what they believe the kids need to be taught into the school syllabus. They have not had any success in that regard. The Sports Ministry has not been able to also help in that regard now i'm talking about this side because before you identified what you think to be significant talent someone must have developed that talent that kid must have played under someone that kid must have played somewhere friends think of where you stay eh? if a child in that neighborhood wanted to play is there a space where that kid would have to, could go and then train, play with their kid, with their friends, age mates, and have fun. Is there a place like that where for the six, eight, ten-year-olds who are now growing want to have a feel of the ball? Not, not anything structured, but just want to go there and have fun. Because that's the first point of identifying who has the interest and who has the unique talents for you to then say that because there is this, you want to take the player on and then groom them. Friends, and... Uh, I'm trying to include everyone. So everyone listening to us, just make a mental picture of where you live, right? Or even where you work. Is there any such space available? So you're so saying there that needs to be a policy convergence okay, between, enough. between the FA's plan, what the Ministry of Education and what the Ministry of Youth and Sports for this want to work ultimately. For, for this to work. So in okay. terms of the infrastructure in place where the kids will play, 
the people who are going to teach the kids the fundamentals that the FA is going to see to identify? Um, before we go, guys, Dreams FC against Zamalek this very weekend. Um, big deal. What kind of result would be favorable to, to Dreams in this situation? Uh, Sicho, 20-second analysis. I mean, the game should be alive by the time they come for the second leg. The game should be alive. It, so if... They, it, it, even if they, they lose, it, the game should be alive. It, it shouldn't be 3-0, 4-0. You know, just give yourself the opportunity to fight when you come home. And based on what we've seen them do this season, you can't put that past them. But yeah, all the best. Zamalek is a really tough one. Daniel? Extremely tough, but keep believing. It's possible. I really believe it's possible. Yeah. And that you, that you were there, you went to meet Dreams over the week. Yeah. What was the, the, the atmosphere like? in 30 I, seconds what do you think is going to happen in this game it's on sunday at 4 p.m in cairo i don't know what you two have seen but i like i like what they were preparing for um and i think that what they need to focus in the application of whatever they did because we obviously can't talk about that here is to play for a retrievable result right like situ said yeah so that when you come down here, a couple of you. <laughs> you, you are not so left. I have to simplify it. That's why you just said <laughs> you, you said you should be alive by the time they come back. With two hours, two hours, you are not left that with too much. To do. That day, that's for this one. There's something that I can say for Karim Zito. Whatever we see on Sunday, if the players are not able to apply it well, I think we would move to maybe the issue of aura and application and, and that might be the their state uh, of the mind okay. because the taxes the taxes were crazy. yeah that's true a and big, it seemed they understood yeah that's true a big shout out to uh, sweet Karim and factual move back, back. Yeah. 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 and his that girlfriend boys. Aisha was at his graduation <laughs> ceremony <laughs> they look so beautiful together hey. Karim is in love Monday we'll show you pictures yes he has given me a minimum of two and a half years hey, yes. that is so Thank I'm you. counting down congrats Sweet to Mubarak Karim. and Karim who graduated from Unimac GIJ uh, yesterday also a happy birthday to Jacqueline Ansuma uh, Yaboa of Joy News God bless and favor you in everything you do my name is Fentio Tahu Fentio all the best to Dreams FC and thank you so much for joining us we're back again next Friday until then it's bye for now